Please be seated. Distinguished guests, I would like to invite Uncle Chris Tobin, representative of the Darug people, to offer the traditional acknowledgement to country. Thank you. Warami Miriga, Naloa. Hello, friends, and welcome. I belong to one of the local Aboriginal families of the Darug people, the traditional custodians over this part of the country. I wish to firstly pay my respects to the country and its people by acknowledging that we meet today in Wallamatta, the place of the snapper fish and the ancestral homes of the Walla Medical people. I'd like to thank the university too for the invitation to be with you today uh, and to join with the acknowledgement of the country. That acknowledgement is important for our people and much appreciated. My family, in fact, descend from Yarramundi, a respected elder and cleverman of the neighbouring Buruburongo clan during the early years of colonisation. He saw that our survival in this new world could best be secured if we could learn more about it. So he enrolled his daughter, Bulungai, or Maria as she's known, into the Native Institute, school set up in 1815 by Governor Macquarie, offering formal education to Aboriginal children. Maria studied there for several years and used her newly acquired skills to lobby and eventually secure some land for herself and her family out along the Richmond Road. Other Aboriginal families soon joined them there, seeking refuge during the brutal displacements of our people throughout the 1800s. And it became known as the Blackstown, where the present day city of Blacktown gets its name. We are very proud of her, as I'm sure your families are of you here today. And with good reason, your success is our success. Your advancement, our advancement. Now that was <clears throat> probably better understood in more traditional times when camp groups were smaller and clans abided by strict sharing laws, which meant the food that you caught and brought back was distributed throughout the rest of the camp. Your skills and good fortune were thus enjoyed by all. Your efforts literally nourished the rest of the community, and you in turn were looked after by them. Yes, we can do quite beautifully when we work together. Our Aboriginal ancestors certainly lived well in many respects, and I use occasions such as these to offer them to yourselves as a model or a benchmark on how good to expect our lives today. You see, when Captain Cook arrived here a little over 250 years ago, he described the people he encountered as one of the happiest people he'd ever met. They owned nothing he wrote but the tools they carried. They were naked, made their shelters from the bark of trees without cutting them down, and fed their families from the earth without excessive tilling or clearing. There was no slavery, no rich and poor, and no homelessness. Armies were unheard of, as were forts, jails, or even fences. People then collected the resources that were needed which were then shed out according to strict Aboriginal law. Our lands were maintained in their natural state through fire and responsible harvesting. Our rivers and waterways kept clean and unpolluted, with people drinking out of them, as they have done here at Wallamatta for the past 30,000 years. So please consider, this is not some dream yet to be realised or an ideal. This was normal life for us for the longest time and not that long ago. 
And there's no good reason why we should expect less for ourselves and our children than what our ancestors enjoyed. Admittedly, there's a lot more of us. However, we are a clever people and there's still much magic and goodwill in the world, I like to believe. So graduates, I would say expect great and wonderful things from your life. Life is good, we are naturally happy and normally very good at looking after each other and our countries. I would just ask that you share your skills with the rest of us where you can and keep following that beautiful spirit within you that got you this far. Do this and I'm confident we can put together a world we can be proud of and a future that is worthy of our children. We can all do our bit. I'll do mine now by finishing up and letting you graduate. I just want to say congratulations to all of you. Have a wonderful day and all the best in our collective futures. Thank you. Yano. I am pleased to introduce Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research of Macquarie University, Professor Saki Pretorius. Thank you, Chris. It's always good to have you here. And uh, thank you for coming along. I don't know how we will run a graduation ceremony without you here. So thank you very much for coming along. Colleagues, guests, family and friends of our graduates, and most importantly, our graduates. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you today to the graduation ceremony. I bring you, you as the graduates of this university and your guests a special greeting from the members of our university council, the governing body of the university. I hope this will be a very happy, memorable occasion for you all. Today we celebrate the wonderful achievements of those of you about to graduate. Completing a degree is never easy. You need an intelligent and inquiring mind, determination and perseverance. And you need to make many sacrifices. Completing a degree is a great achievement. You have worked very hard to get here today and you have every right to feel proud of what you've accomplished. We at the university are just as proud of you and I'm pleased to be able to congratulate each and every one of you with your achievement. I also want to especially welcome the families supporters and friends of our graduate here with us today as invited guests of our graduates. The fact that you have been invited by one of our graduates to share one of the great days of their lives is proof positive that you have been an important influence. So, to our invited guests, congratulations and thank you for celebrating this great occasion with us. In just a few minutes, it will be my very great honor to confer the degrees upon you and welcome you as lifelong members of that community of scholars that we proudly call Macquarie University. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our occasional speaker, distinguished professor Ron Rapay, AM. Ron Rapay is a distinguished professor of psychology at Macquarie University, where he was a founding director of the Center of Emotional Health. Professor Rapay's research specializes in mental health, especially in anxiety and related disorders across the lifespan. He can, he has created models of the development of mental disorders and has used these uh, theories to produce evidence-based treatment programs. One of the best known programs, Cool Kids, is used in over 25 countries and translated into more than a dozen languages. 
Currently, Professor Rapay has been engaged by the Australian Department of Education to develop a tool to identify students across the Australian schools who may have been struggling with mental health. Professor Rapay has been honoured by awards from both scientific and consumer groups, including Distinguished Career Award from the Australian Association for CBT and the Distinguished Contribution to Science Award from the Australian Psychological Society. He was awarded an Australian Research Council Laureate Fellowship, which is the ultimate that you can get as a researcher in Australia. He was awarded that in 2015 and was made a member of the Order of Australia in 2012 for his contributions to clinical psychology, especially among young people. I now invite distinguished professor Ron Rapay AM to deliver the occasional address. Ron. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, members of the faculty, distinguished guests, and their families and friends, and graduates. This is very difficult, I can't see, now I can see you. Congratulations to all of you. You've managed to survive three or four or five or seven years, perhaps, at Macquarie University. You've managed to navigate student one. You've managed to survive the Arctic temperatures in our air-conditioned buildings. And if I can believe the registrar, it seems that you've passed all your courses, or at least ChatGPT has. <laughs> so now the fear and worry creeps in. You're about to face the real world. All those hours studying group-based trajectory modelling or Foucault's theory of self-constituting subjectivity are finally going to come in useful. All those times when you said, why are they teaching us this, this stuff? I just want to treat someone are finally going to fall into place. Because I can tell you as someone who's been around for a long time that there are an incredible number of times in your life when there's some, you get a sudden flash of insight and you realise that something that you just thought or you did or you explained to someone, you actually learned at university. Well, maybe not group-based trajectory modelling unless you really have no friends. But let's look at some of the great things you did learn at university. First, you learned how to pull an all-nighter and get that assignment in with seconds to spare. That's an incredible skill. Obviously, it'll form the cornerstone of your work life. But think of all the benefits to the rest of your life. There's nothing worse, for example, than getting to the airport an hour and a half before your flight and sitting and watching the seconds tick by while you're waiting for your plane. Now that you're a university graduate, you can breeze in only minutes before they close the doors. Of course, the chance that your flight will actually leave on time is pretty small, especially if you're on Qantas, but there's not much the university can do about that. Even our Deputy Vice-Chancellor has to wait if his flight is delayed. Of course, he's sitting with the Prime Minister sun in the Captain's Lounge, sipping single malt whiskies, but that's another graduation talk. You've also learned how to listen to lectures at double speed. Now that is a skill that I can only marvel at. It's a skill that senior people like me never got the chance to because we had to attend things called lectures in places called lecture halls. I don't even need to tell you how valuable this particular skill of yours will be. It speaks for itself. But whenever you find yourself rudely interrupting your Aunt Nettie or Grandpa Joe because they are speaking too slowly, just remind yourself, I learnt that at Macquarie University. So now let's get to the key lesson, the alpha male skill that you learned in your years at this university. Critical thinking. You're expecting a punchline there, weren't you? But I'm actually going to be serious for a second now. The ability to apply basic common sense and logic to any argument and the ability to evaluate any claim in terms of its evidence. In other words, the ability and the desire to look up the facts before making a decision. Your university studies have taught you to apply a critical lens to every so-called claim, to search out and sort through complex evidence, and to critically examine the quality of scientific uh, research. Could you just imagine how useful that would be to a country full of Americans right now? 
Okay, quick game of trivia, multiple choice. Which of the following is true? A, the CIA controls Cardi B. B, Elvis is alive and living in Minnesota. Or C, Katy Perry really is Jean Benet's Ramsey. Two, so, is that too close? Uh, two, Scott Morrison was A, Australia's 30th Prime Minister. B, the Minister for Health. C, the Minister for Finance. D, the Minister for Resources. <laughs> okay. Three, OnlyFans is a, new, uh, is a, a newfangled app for rugby followers. B, a shop in Liverpool that sells air conditioners. Or C, a great way to finance your university degree. <laughs> Perhaps in the catered event that follows this graduation, you can check with your families about what they answered, and that should make for some fun discussions. And parents, if you didn't quite get the reference to the final question, that's probably a good thing. Graduates, I'm assuming many of you would have answered all of the above to those questions, so congratulations, and you did learn something in your exams at Macquarie University. But that's not actually the answer I was looking for. Hopefully, as graduates with a university degree, you answered, I have no idea, but I'm going to the literature to find out. Because that's the single most important lesson that you've learned at university. It's the single most important skill that your years of study have endowed on you. So coming full circle, you're now going out into the real world, and that involves growing up, taking on social and moral responsibilities. I certainly don't envy your generation. You're going to be facing some very serious issues. Rising levels of mental health problems, increasing socioeconomic disparities, crippling and life-altering climate change, rampant populism among our political classes, artificial intelligence. These are serious issues that are going to face all of you in your lifetimes. And along with these issues, and with the growth of instantaneous communication, there will be more and more fake news. It's not only Aunt Nettie and Grandpa Joe who claim that Taylor Swift is a secret Russian spy, or that Britney Spears is actually a clone. So years from now, when you're at a party, and a drunken friend tells you that Scott Morrison created COVID-19 so he could take over the government, maybe that's right, uh, I hope you'll answer, let me check the evidence and get back to you. And as you walk away, you can smile to yourself and remember that your university years taught you something life-changing. Congratulations. Now, there it is. Ron, thank you. You got a lot of laughs from this side of the aisle. And um, I did my own homework. Last week I asked some of you, several of you, half a dozen, what do you think about Professor Ron Repay? And I got two main questions or responses. Some of you said, he's hot. <laughs> he's a really hottie. And then other people said, he is very cool. <laughs> He's a cool professor. You've just seen it. And for the parents and the guests on this side, this is the sort of professors that we have here at Macquarie. Uh, fire and ice. They can be hot and cool at the same time. Ron, thank you very much. Amongst all those quirks of you, you came up with a very few or some of the very important messages of what one learns at the university. I hope you've taken note of them um, and that we have cool professors that look after the anxiety levels and models that we can apply to help young people. And isn't that an important area of study? this day and age, post-COVID COVID anyway. We had a bit of a conversation uh, last Friday about that, and I must say I've learned a lot. I hope you have learned a lot. We will see whether the registrar will tell me whether you deserve degrees, which I'm going to do now. As Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research of Macquarie University, I especially look forward to presiding at ceremonies such as today's. 
and conferring degrees on those who have complied with the university's requirements for such awards. I now call on the Acting Registrar, Professor Trin Jones, to formally certify the eligibility of those who have met the requirements of these awards. Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research, I will certify that all of the candidates being presented here today and those who are absent have satisfied the requirements of the Academic Senate for the degrees to which they are to be awarded, despite what Professor Rappe may say. <laughs> Would all candidates for admission to degrees please stand? In the name of the Macquarie University Council and by my authority as Deputy Vice Chancellor Research, I admit each of you present and those who are absent today to the degrees for which they have qualified. Congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research, the graduates at this ceremony are from the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences. I now call on Professor Patrick McNeil, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Medicine and Health and Executive Dean, Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences to present the graduates. Professor McNeil. Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research, the graduates of this ceremony are from the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences which contains two schools, the School of Psychological Sciences and the Macquarie Medical School, and three departments, Health Sciences, Linguistics and Chiropractic, as well as the Research Institute, the Australian Institute of Health Innovation. The faculty is a core component of the Macquarie University Health Sciences Centre, which is a unique academic health enterprise in Australia. As Macquarie is the only university that integrates its learning and research with clinical practice here on campus at our own health service called MQ Health. MQ Health, MQ Health provides the opportunity for students enrolled within the faculty to learn or to undertake research in an environment where real healthcare practice is occurring. And the faculty is very proud of the way it integrates its learning and its health uh, and medical research with patient care, captured by the purpose of MQ Health in three words, heal, learn, discover. In research, the faculty has particular strengths in psychological and cognitive sciences, neurosciences, cancer, clinical trials and health systems research. Students in the faculty are studying one of nine undergraduate degrees or a larger number of postgraduate coursework or research degrees. The majority of graduates to be, that I'll present today are graduating from uh, the Bachelor of Psychology and related degrees. <coughs> Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research, I present to you the graduates from the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences whom you have admitted to degrees or awarded diplomas. I present graduates admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Psychology Honours, Class 1. Elijah Adzenja. Sarah Bonacorso. Charlotte Boyd. Luke Bryant.
recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Ashley Chung. Patricia Dus. <laughs> Druva Dave. <laughs> Isabel Fail. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, James Franklin. Kayla Goldring. <laughs> Bethany Gawley. Felicity Heap. <laughs> Jesse Hero. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Lucia Jones. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Masud Katirai. <laughs> Georgia Qatar. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Alexander Kilby.
Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Emily Kopp. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Philip Kurian. <laughs> Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Nadia Lynch. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Jordan Lyons. <laughs> Tina Moda Makuru Midza. Shamikta Mani. <laughs> Diana Rivera. Charles McKinley. <laughs> Madeline Michelezzi. Zaid Noon. Kate O'Sullivan. Kipna Palmer. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Hannah Sanderson. <laughs> Dias Sham. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Noah Sutton. <laughs> Ellen Thomas. Owen 
Tong. Thais Maria Vieira Costa. <laughs> Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Cameron Wolfe. Jasmine Wood. <laughs> Max Wren. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Edwina Yu. <laughs> Sage Ziman. I present graduates submitted to the degree of Bachelor of Psychology Honours. Ahmed Abdul Rahman. <laughs> Hala Alamadeen. Jeremy Bingham. <laughs> Isabel Blackmore. Gay Fernando <laughs> Olivia Fragopoulos. Stella Genem. <laughs> Michael Gosper. Isabel Harrison. <laughs> A 
Martin Hekmat Shua. Bandana Preet Kaur. <laughs> Paulina Corbanova. Anthony Lai. <laughs> Katja Liaros. Melissa Loschiavo. <laughs> Kate Mackay. Jamie McMillan. <laughs> Hannah Nalen. Michael Parada. <laughs> Valentina Peritza. Gabriella Ivana Rianto. <laughs> Samuel Schofield. Sepir Shafazand. <laughs> Milena Shevdova. Antonia Zucalus. <laughs> Ethan Williams.
Mandy Jung. I present the graduate admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Commerce and Bachelor of Psychology, Sean Etherington. I present graduate submitted to the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Rafaela Chung. Valerie Dung. <laughs> Georgia Gore. <laughs> Neha Kapoor. <laughs> Francine Kuan. Jia Ling Wang. I present graduates submitted to the degree of Bachelor of Arts Psychology, Emma Rainbow. Ministry. I present graduates submitted to the degree of Bachelor of Psychology. Edu Aika. Mana Alo Gaiti <laughs> Elena Altoon. Tara Amin. <laughs> Rafael Amiskari. Sienna Anderson. <laughs> Ian.
Isabel Asunlin Hayes. Natalie Atala. <laughs> Natasha Arting. Lulu Barker. <laughs> Ella Barrett. <laughs> Madeline Beard. Ruby Brooks. <laughs> Cara Brown. George Bundy. <laughs> Polly Chan. Alicia Ching. <laughs> Isabel Clinton. Sophie Connor. <laughs> Phoebe Coroneo. Christopher C Couch. <laughs> Jamie Cummings. Alyssa Dadal. <laughs> Alexandra Jade Dardanelliotis.
Eliana Digby. Aaron Dobinson. Travia Docker. <laughs> Adeline Donkin. Bryn Driver. <laughs> Annie Duffin. Lucia El Cori <laughs> Aya El Dahabi. Jake El Galada. <laughs> Yasmin Elmir. Aya El Najjar. <laughs> Angelina El Saki. Jesse Feltham. <laughs> Lauren Fisher. Dominic Fromager. <laughs> Yasmita Gavaredi. Taryn Gold. <laughs> Aditi Jimire.
Zoe Gonzalez. Reese Graham. Annika Grant. Mary Rose Guerra. Tess Hanbury. Lauren Hickory. Elizabeth Hogg. Caitlin Holmes. Brandon Hu. Natasha Yani. Luca Ingram. Saskia Jane. Hannah Jong. <laughs> Sevda Joda. Pamela Karagiannis. <laughs> Mohammed Khatan. Karina Kaur. Yeah. 
James Kavanagh. Nadia Kamali. <laughs> Safia Kamali. Adivan Hamisi. Claire Kim. Zoe Kim. <laughs> Caitlin Lemon. Rosanna Leon. Dina Linky. Bronte Lockie. <laughs> Danielle Lozano. Claudia Linden. <laughs> Natasha Maishian. Alexandra Marley. <laughs> Jessica Manino. Sienna Manns. <laughs> J. 
John Maresco. Raja Mahaba. Chloe McCammon. <laughs> Bella McDermott. Jacinta Mifsud. <laughs> Shantao Malani. Nabira Mirza. Yeah. Isabel Mitchell. Nicholas Moody. <laughs> Matthew Morgan. <laughs> Asha Murphy. Joshua Ng. James Nikolau. Cassandra Norton. <laughs> Thomas O'Brien. Nilay Pandey. Adrian Pereira. Evan Perkins. <laughs> Jacinta Mifsud. 
Harriet Perison. Natalie Emma Pototsky. <laughs> Janine Pui. Rachel Pulver. <laughs> Ashling Purcell. Isabel Reed. <laughs> Tabitha Robinson. Drishti Rohira. <laughs> Jackson Salt. Alyssa Schleider. <laughs> Ayan Segol. Shreya Sharma. <laughs> Charlotte Smith. Neha Ruth Sylvester. <laughs> Ani Stepanovska. Felicia Nathanie Tamaja. <laughs> Princess Jalen N. Tawator.
Jacob Taylor. Suraka Tia Guruja. <laughs> Alexandra Tobin. Sophia Toll. <laughs> Josephine Tran. Jessica Valla. <laughs> Rebecca Valdez. Dylan Watson. Love your work, Dylan. Love you, bro. Audrey Williams. <laughs> Louise Willoughby. Adrian Young. <laughs> Audrey Ziada. Saja Zraika. I present graduates submitted to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Alastair Bhattarai. Natasha Lee. I present the graduate admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Science Psychology, Vanessa Auditore.
The Doctor of Philosophy is awarded to graduates who have demonstrated the capacity to conduct research independently by forming a distinct contribution to the knowledge of the subject and to afford evidence of coherence and originality shown either by the discovery of new facts or by the exercise of independent critical power. I present the graduate admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Dr. Eileen Law for a thesis entitled Moral Disengagement and Mental Health. The University Medal is the university's most prestigious academic award and is awarded to students who have demonstrated exceptional academic excellence throughout their university studies. Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research, I present graduates admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Psychology Honours Class 1 with the University Medal for Psychology. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Tara Arrow. Recipient of the Macquarie University Award for Academic Excellence, Eva Basford. <laughs> both Tara and Eva have both been awarded the University Medal. Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research, that completes this afternoon's presentation of the graduates from the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences. Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research, I now call on Dr Eileen Law, who graduated today with a Doctor of Philosophy, to speak on behalf of the graduating group. Dr Law. Good afternoon, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, members of the university, fellow graduates, and proud guests. I'm truly privileged to stand here and speak on this special occasion. Congratulations to all graduates on your incredible achievement. It was 2014 when I first walked through this campus, having absolutely no clue where I was going, trying to find my first Psych 104 tute. A lot has changed in 10 years. That unit's now called PSYU 1101. And the building where I actually had my first shoot got knocked down a while back, so it doesn't actually exist anymore. And there have been so many other changes, challenges that we all had to face to get to where we are today. I would like to take this opportunity and ask you to reflect on some of the difficulties you encountered and had to overcome. Studying throughout the pandemic, balancing study while needing to work, invest in your relationships, and carve out time for yourself. Perhaps even now you may be feeling unsure about where to from here, and you continue to hold your head high in the face of uncertainty. It's important to recognize for yourself the weight of this accomplishment, the dedication and resilience 
you've demonstrated. One of the more meaningful learnings I took from being a student at Macquarie, in addition to the stats, of course, was the importance of turning to others. It's only been in these last few years or so that I really understood for myself what it meant to turn to others for support. I personally would not be standing here today without the support and guidance of my supervisor and our research team, the tutors who inspired me, the friends I made along the way, and of course, my family. The people who are sitting around you today are the people who have traveled along the same road, even if you saw them today and thought, I've never seen you in all the years I've been here. There's common humanity in having overcome similar struggles. You have a connection, and this connection will extend beyond our time here. There will be moments when we will again face challenges and feel uncertain about where to go, and that's okay. It's especially important in those times to remember what we have already overcome, our capacity for resilience, and the people we can turn to for support. Congratulations again, fellow graduates, on reaching this milestone. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Um, to all the other graduate, uh, graduates, I just want to say, you'll forgive me if I say, my favorite students are always the ones in the maroon, maroon uh, outfits. Congratulations, Eileen, and thank you for persisting. And hopefully, all these uh, people dressed in black will look like you one day. We're waiting for you all. <laughs> then I can say, you're also my favorite students. <laughs> At the moment, we like you, but we'll like you more if you continue. Congratulations and thank you for your, for your words.
distinguished guests, please join me in expressing our appreciation to Angela Brewer. At every graduation ceremony, when Angela's on stage, it brings tears to my eyes. I'm a little bit embarrassed by that, but you know, that's what happens. But Angela is very humble. She knows that we like to call her back, but she disappears very quickly. <laughs> so Angela, thank you very, very much again for a superb um, expression of, of that melody. I would also like to, um, I have to say, Angela is also the founder of the artistic, and the artistic director of the Coast Opera Australia. So <clears throat> I would like you also to um, thank our musicians on the organ, Heather Moyne Boyd. Thank you, Heather. And on the trumpet, Melanie McLaughlin. I would like to take this opportunity also to acknowledge and thank the representatives from our alumni community who have generously offered their time to simply visit this campus. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong page. To ensure that the day runs smoothly so that you can celebrate this occasion in style. And finally, please join me in thanking all technical staff who ensure that the proceedings can be seen and heard, not just for all of you here today, but also for those of you who are watching live stream. Thank you so very much. Before I conclude the ceremony, I would just li like to say that, you know what is the hardest thing for me at graduations when I preside over a graduation? First of all, not to have long conversations here, because whoever stands at the lectern gets irritated uh, with me. Uh, the second one is, it's very hard for me to stick to a script. Um, it is just very difficult for me to do. Uh, so. Uh, forgive me for making mistakes here and there. And then the third last thing that is very difficult for me is I know what you're thinking. Today is celebration, right? Are you going to celebrate? Yeah. So for me to manage your expectations, there is a difference between perception and perspective. These are hard times. So just forgive us whatever we're going to let you taste outside, it's Monday afternoon. <laughs> Graduates, this ceremony marks a change in your relationship with Macquarie University, but it is certainly not the end of your association with us. From today onwards, you are now part of the bigger Macquarie family. Our alumni network which is over 234,000 graduates strong, spanning more than 150 countries around the globe, welcomes you to the fold. This is the beginning of the rest of your lives. We will look forward to seeing you back on campus to attend alumni, uh, alumni events and undertake further study or simply visit our beautiful campus and reminisce about the good times that you spent here at Macquarie University as a student. Graduates, the award of a university degree carries many opportunities and privileges, but like all privileges, it also carries lots of responsibilities. I urge you to commit yourselves to a program of lifelong learning and inquiry I just want to pause here. We would like to see you back. The university needs you back. I told you it's hard times. Come back. Um, lifelong learning. 
So I urge you to come and enroll for more degrees. I also urge you to set ambitious goals for yourselves. I urge you to continue the hard work that has already brought you so far. My hope is that as graduates of Macquarie University, you will use whatever you have learned here, not only for your own benefit, but also for the betterment of the community. And in all you do, I charge you to uphold the good name of Macquarie University. It is also my hope that you always remember the people who have helped you along the way, many of whom are here on stage. So to acknowledge their contribution and thank them for all that they have done and contributed, I would like you to give them a mighty round of applause. Now I would like you to stand up and place your testimonies on your seats and turn around and face your families and friends. And now I invite you to give them a, an almighty round of applause. You can now turn around, but don't, don't sit, uh, sit just yet. Here on stage are our academic, or some of our academic staff, who have supported you throughout your journey. I would like to ask our staff here also to stand up and enjoy the moment with us, and please give them another round of applause. Graduates, please remain standing, but do pick up your testimonies. You don't want to leave them here, right? Um, since the official party will now leave uh, the hall, we will go down this aisle, and that will be followed by our graduates. As we do, Heather will play on the organ the traditional recessional music of graduation, which has been played at ceremonies over centuries. There is an age-old set of Latin lyrics which begins as Gorimus igitur dum sumus ibones. In translation, this graduation exit song starts out, therefore, let us rejoice. We will always be young. Can you see my hair? Always be young. The song speaks in a whimsical way of youth and old age at the very same time, of the brevity of life and the inevitability of death, of state and city and of happiness. Again, graduates of Macquarie University, my warmest congratulations and every best wish for the futures filled with success, satisfaction, and most importantly, happiness. Now, might I ask everyone to please stand. Shortly, I will lead the, lead the official party out to be followed by the graduates and then invite you all for some light, light refreshments. Light refreshments. <laughs> In closing today's uh, wonderful celebration, of your achieve achievements, I say again, Gorimus Igitur, therefore let us rejoice. Thank you.